20 or 25 minutes. Uh, I had seen enough film uh, of their execution, their ability to shoot the basketball, uh, to disrupt you with changing defenses. Uh, so, uh, you know, I was scared to death of this game, partly because I think, you know, Chicago State is a little bit better than their record might indicate. Uh, and, uh, and also, obviously, the time that it took place, uh, you know, with, with uh, the opening of Big East play right around the corner. So uh, I was proud of our team that we were able to come out the second half and defend with a little bit more urgency. Uh, we got to the glass a little bit more um, and then did a better job taking care of the basketball. Uh, we had a chance to create some separation in the first half. I think we were up 11 or 12 and we turned it over on back-to-back -back possessions, which led to easy baskets for them, and that's uh, – something that we have to avoid and was one of our goals going into the game uh, to attempt to avoid that. So it was good to shoot the basketball well. I wish we'd have I hope we saved a few for Tuesday uh, because we had, we had a lot of guys clicking on all cylinders shooting the basketball from the three-point line tonight. Questions from the student athletes? Coach, could you comment a little bit on that start you had, 16 points in about six minutes, and, and then what did Chicago State do to kind of down. Yeah, I mean, it's a great start. You know, I was hitting some some shots that got me in the rhythm pretty early, and uh, just had that had it, had it going. And then I just, you know, I think Chicago State um, made a couple changes. They put a, a guard onto me, and we're switching a lot of things and just being really physical. Um, but I mean, then that opened up things for for my teammates, and they did, they knocked down some shots as well. So uh, great start, but uh, I'm just glad we got the win. Obviously, you've played together a long time. Have you ever seen a game where so many players are clicking, especially from outside? And what's it like to be in a game like that? Yeah, I mean, definitely have seen that. Uh, I mean, that Nebraska game, um, that was pretty special there. I mean, that kind of, that's kind of what it felt like tonight. And, you know, I've seen Jahans and Ethan hit that many threes. I mean, pretty much every day in practice, someone has it going. So uh, it's no, nothing new to us. And uh, we have to continue to work work hard in practice, stay after and get shots, and uh, we'll have nights like these quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I agree with Doug. I mean, uh, we've played with each other for so long that we understand when someone has the hot hand. Uh, you know, obviously, Ethan's one of those guys that can get it going pretty quickly. Doug do, does it on a you know nightly basis. So uh, whenever someone has a goal, we just try to go back to them, uh, try to find them. And we did a pretty good job of that tonight when everybody had their little streak or they were going on there. So it's nice to see that we're still an unselfish team. and. You know, we're hoping that keeps going in the future. We regrouped at halftime, and you know, uh, we were getting a little lazy out there um, the first half. And you know, they hit a couple tough shots. You know, some of those pull-ups from um, half court, basically. Uh, but I thought. I thought we did a great job adjusting at half. Um, we, we met as a team uh, before we took the floor and trying to get them, hold them to 55 points. And they got a couple more. But uh, overall, I thought we just we did a great job of being more focused on, on their sets and uh, knowing their personnel. I thought we were certainly more locked in uh, in the second half. And, you know, Coach Max said that, you know, we really need to flip the switch at halftime. I think we did a pretty good job of that, especially in the first five minutes. Uh, we took away some of the stuff that they were getting in the first half and uh, rebounded as a group. And then once we did that, we got our transition game going and forced them to call, you know, a few timeouts. So uh, it's good to see that we could just that we were able to flip the switch tonight, but we need to have a more consistent effort on the defensive end. Doug, you hit 2,500 points and set the school record for consecutive free throws. Was it nice to get those milestones out of the way before the East play starts? Yeah, I mean, I did. So I mean, yeah, it feels great um, to, to, to catch Booker there, um, but uh, you know, just uh, means a lot, um, not only to me, but just um, these guys have helped me out so much to get to this point. Um, I would have never guessed I'd ever make it to this point, but uh, you know, it's still a lot of basketball to be played, and um, we're really looking forward to, to get started um, in the Big East. Doug, is that free throw record something uh, you can be proud of in the sense that you know, a lot of players don't work on that in college a lot. That seems to have worked for you. Yeah, I mean, just just got to be focused every time you step up to the line. And, you know, we work a lot in practice. I think Jay's hit 22 in a row, so he's coming for me now. Uh, but.
but uh, you know, it's just, it just takes a lot of focus and a lot of work. Um, I think it's a part of the game kids don't spend enough time on just because um, they're worried about their ball handling, their shooting, and I think I think free throws, getting to the line, is a really important part of the game. Uh, yeah, but I've been working on that for about four years now, so <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to catch them. Guys, your first uh, first phase of the season done, non-conference. Now it's uh, the games that are really important. Both of y'all to get off to a good start on Tuesday uh, against Marquette. Um, yeah, it's we're definitely looking to you know step into the Big East on the you know take a good step um, in our first game there. Um, you know, Marquette's going to be a tough team. You know, they're an experienced team. Um, they have a great coaching staff that, you know, puts them in the right spot to win games. They've played together long enough. They know each other very well, much like our team. So, you know, it's going to be a very interesting game in that sense. Uh, you know, we're just hoping to get off to a good start, you know, understand what our roles are defensively and how we can stop them. And then uh, we're going to look at some more film to see how we can attack them offensively, uh, offensively as well. So. Uh, obviously, it should be a really good game, but we're all really excited to, you know, see uh, what the challenge of the Big East is. Two more for these guys. Yeah, yeah. talk about the Big East coach. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's what we've all been waiting for, um, fans and players, coaches. You know, this is this is the one uh, to get started off on the right track. And, uh, you know, Marquette is one of the better teams in the league, so it's going to be a huge challenge. And um, I expect, like, a Wichita State-type atmosphere like last year. Um, here Tuesday night. So uh, it, it should be a great game. Two really good teams going at it, and uh, we're excited just to, to get underway. As good a shooting team as you guys are, at one point in that game, you guys had hit 15 three-pointers and four two-pointers. I mean, when you get in a, a groove like that, does it almost seem a little surreal? Um, I mean, not really. We just just the way it is every day in practice. I mean, you're there. You see, you see a lot of those um, three point shots going up and you know that's just kind of the way we play you know if we if someone has it going early we find them and uh, with me and Ethan in there together to start the game um, I think that's pretty dangerous and the way Johans is shooting it too um, so we definitely still are trying to play inside out um, just to spread that floor for our shooters but if we have it going like we did tonight uh, we're going to continue to go with a hot hand Thanks guys continue on with questions for Greg McGurk Everything is new, you know. It's uh, it it's nine new scouting reports, uh, you know, nine new cities to visit, nine new uh, arenas that we'll play in. Uh, so, you know, there's there's some there's an element of excitement to that, but also, you know, an element of concern just because it is everything is so new. Uh, but it, it's uh, you know it's something that we're certainly looking forward to. Uh, you know, you only get one chance to play the first game of something. So this is the first Tuesday night will be the first game in, you know, in Creighton's history in the Big East it's that I think will be a long and successful history and something that our players 50 years from now can tell their grandkids that they played in the first Big East game that Creighton ever played in. I hope they can tell them that they won that game. Uh, and, you know, I'll be disappointed if we lose, but Coach Williams will be disappointed if Marquette loses as well. Uh, so you know, I think it's uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think there'll be a great energy in the building, uh, and obviously we're going we're going to have to play really really well because I've got uh, tremendous respect for Marquette. Uh, they've played a you know one of the best schedules, if not the best schedule in the country, and you know that's part of the reason their record maybe isn't as glamorous as it's been in the past. Uh, they've gone on the road, they've played good people, uh, and they've come up a few possessions short in a few of those games. Uh, but it, it'll be uh, it'll be pretty uh, electric in here Tuesday night. Coach, what's your thoughts when you, at that point in the game, when you got 15 three-pointers and four two-pointers? I don't even think twice about it. Uh, if if you're going to give us an open three-point shot, that's, that's the best percentage shot that we can get because – the numbers say we're going to make between 40 and 45% of that. And if you do the math, 
Uh, that's a little over 12 points every 10 possessions, and that's that's good enough to win a lot of basketball games. Uh, so if we can get the guys we want shooting it loose, uh, they've got the green light. They always have had, and uh, they always will. Uh, and obviously, as things start to spread out a little bit more, uh, then you have to be able to attack the rim and try to score at the rim. Uh, but, you know, Cincinnati took 34 three-point shots against Chicago State. So the fact that we took 25 shouldn't be alarming. That's, that's kind of what Chicago State gives you. Brandon, you talk about the free throw record that that set tonight and the importance of that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's hard to make 37 free throws in a gym by yourself in a row, let alone in game situations. So it's obviously something that he should be very proud of. Uh, he's he's worked on his free throws over the course of his career. Uh, you know, I want to say he was in the low to mid 70s uh, in high school as a free throw shooter, and uh, he has continued to get better really every year in college. And it's it's because he's, as he said, he works at them. And if you watch Doug, you could watch all 37 uh, 37 of them, and they would all look exactly the same. I mean, he does ex the exact same routine every time he shoots a free throw. And uh, that takes some discipline and takes some practice. And, you know, really that's the way to be a good free throw shooter is to make sure that uh, your rhythm, your routine is exactly the same every single time. When it comes to, to Tuesday, you said it, and both of them said it, they're excited. As a coaching <coughs> staff, do you guys think you have to say anything to keep them not locked in but not to get too overanimated? Uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna be juiced. There's no question. I mean, I think like you know as Doug said, I think the arena will feel a little bit like it did when we played Wichita for the conference title last year. Uh, I'd like to get to the point where it feels that way every every game uh, because that makes this place an impossible place to play. So I, I think the players are excited about it. I think the fans are excited about it. The only ones that aren't that excited about it are the guys that have to prepare to play Marquette, and that's myself and my coaching staff because when you watch them on film. Uh, obviously, they present a lot of challenges. Uh, so we've got a lot of work to do the next 48 hours. Well, back on Twitter, you said defense and rebounding was going to be your biggest challenge going into the Big East. How have you improved on that? Where is that at heading into the conference season? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is our eighth game where we've had our, held our opponent under 40% shooting. Uh, I'm not 100% certain. Is that correct, Rob? Uh, and I think one of those, maybe they got over 40% right at the end when we had a big lead. Uh, so I think for the most part, and I, th I think I said this last week, except for San Diego State where they got to the free throw line far too often and got in the paint too much, uh, and at St. Joe's where we decided to take away their interior and leave some guys in the three-point line and they made us pay for it, those are really the two games where team's efficiency level offensively was at a level where it's very difficult to win. And we found a way to win one of those and we lost the other one. Uh, but other than that, even the George Washington game when we lost, our defensive effort was good enough. Uh, rebounding is going to have to be by committee. We do not have a dominant rebounder. We need five guys putting a body on somebody like you saw against Cal uh, last week. So that's, that's going to have to be the case against Marquette. They're big and physical across the front line. They're athletic on the wing. Uh, they'll chase it on the offensive glass. So uh, you know we can't go very long tomorrow. But we have to be very focused and very precise in what we do in practice as we prepare for Tuesday. Minutes out of Zach Hansen tonight. Tell us <coughs> a little bit about where Z he's at. Zach has practiced really well the last two or three days. His, his energy level's been better. Uh, he's been finishing better at the rim. He's demanding the ball a little bit more. Uh, so it was it was part of my plan to get him out there a little bit more. So it was good to see him be productive while he was there. Uh, it's just a little bit of a challenge with Doug and Ethan playing so well and Will having four years of experience to find minutes for that fourth guy. Uh, and, you know, we have Zach and Jeff who at times have both shown signs of being able to help us. It's just uh, it's difficult to find minutes. But uh, he's continuing to play hard. He's continuing to make progress. And I thought we saw some signs of that progress this afternoon. Last year, Ethan spent a lot of time guarding the perimeter, around the perimeter with his Greg this year. Is he better suited to guard? I'm not sure Ethan's really suited to guard anybody. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he, he's really adjusted to that very well and never complained about it. You know, Ethan is uh, hes one of the greatest examples of a teammate that I've ever coached. Uh, you know, he's, he's played the same position as the coach's son for three years and uh, never once questioned any decision that I made and was always 
uh, very willing to play whatever role the team needed him to play. And I, I remember a situation in the conference tournament last year where I was going to put him in the game, and he said, Coach, just leave Gregory and Doug. They're rolling right now. Now, how many guys will do that? I mean, that's – that's a guy that truly just cares about what the scoreboard says at the end of the game. And he's as good example, a good of, a, as good of an example of that as anybody I've ever coached. And now this year, uh, you know, when we were struggling a little early and we wanted a little spark to our lineup, uh, the starting lineup, uh, you know, he's got to guard the five a bunch. And he figures out a way, bangs around in there. And, uh, uh, you know, Ethan is such a detailed guy from a scouting report standpoint. He's going to be where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. Uh, with the post doubles and the different things that we have to do. He's been really, really good. So uh, I'm really proud of Ethan, and I'm really happy for the success that he's had because he's, uh, he's sacrificed a lot and, and uh, probably doesn't get the credit that he deserves for our success over the course of the last three years. We, we would not be the team that we've been without Ethan Rogge. What is it about his his mental state, I guess is the way to say it? He gets in foul trouble early. He's sitting down the majority of the first half. Tight game there at the second, at the beginning of the second. He comes out and does what he does. He said, you can roll the guy out of a wheelchair and he'll he'll stand up and shoot the basketball. <laughs> so it doesn't make any difference. I mean, he was uh, he's 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 as good a shooter as I've ever coached, and I've coached some good ones, and there's some good ones on this team. But uh, he uh, he gets it off quick. Uh, he shoots it deep, and his release is high. So you essentially have to be standing right next to him to stop it. And when he's when he's feeling confident, uh, he's going to make him. And uh, you know he did it again tonight. It just uh, he's had a lot of games like this this year. You shared a lot of opponents having played in that wooden closet. How does that affect the next 24 hours? Mm, it, I don't <laughs> I don't know that it affects the next 24 hours much. You know we've we've watched all that. Uh, you know, we, we worked on Marquette a little bit Christmas night and then really spent all day the 26th, a, a good film session and the practice on the 26th on Marquette, on different things that we need to do defensively. Uh, so my hope is that when we go back to the film room tomorrow morning, our guys will be able to, okay, I remember, uh, I, we can pick this up. And uh, uh, so it's it's a short turnout, turnaround. As I, I've said this week, I wish this game would have been yesterday. Uh, to give us another day, but it's just the way the schedule worked out. Uh, but obviously the adrenaline will be kicked in full gear, and I think our guys will be ready Tuesday night. Did the Steelers win? No, the Steelers, but San Diego 